Hey everybody, it's Erica here, and welcome to day one of the Poppy Sew Along. We are very excited to be hosting the Sew Along this month. Um, this month you're going to get Jessica and myself, so we'll be on there a little bit together, and then we'll also be taking turns. We're both going to be sewing a poppy, so we'll both be available to help with questions along the way, and we're just really excited to sew and to see what um, you girls come up with because you always make the most amazing things. So we're really pumped. So today is day one, um, always the easiest day, which is why I volunteered to help out today. <laughs> no, but seriously, today's a fun day because we get to cut out our pattern pieces and we get to pick our fabrics and cut out our fabric and get ready to start everything. So um, I'm going to share with you my fabrics that I'm using. Um, Cairo actually doesn't fit in Poppy anymore because she's totally a tween. She's beside, between 12 and 14 tween now, which is insane because Kyra was like three or four when we started um, sewing and started Violet Filled Thread. So I can't believe she's in that size grouping now, but she is. So I can't sew a poppy for Cairo, but thankfully I have nieces. And one of my nieces, Lola, is only eight. And so I'm gonna be sewing my poppy for Lola. So I'll show you what I have picked out. Um, also, I want to talk to you about the placket. Do you or do you not need it? Um, maybe some reasons why you might want it or you might want to leave it out. So I'm going to flip the camera around, show you my fabrics, and we'll discuss the placket. And then we'll all be ready to start sewing tomorrow. Okay, so I am going to be sewing my poppy out of this Rifle Paper Company fabric. I know that um, a lot of people have used it and it's not one of the newest ones out, but I have yet to use this print and I've had it sitting on my shelf pretty much since it came out and I'm completely obsessed with it. And I think it'll be so pretty for fall and I know Lola's gonna love it and I know her mom is too. So I'm gonna cut it out of Rifle. I'm thinking like maybe turn it this way for the bodice to like showcase this and um, maybe do something opposite on the dress length. I'm not totally sure yet, but this is the fabric I'm using. This is a cotton. I'm going to make the short sleeve, kind of the short puff sleeve. Um, so I think it'll be really pretty for that. Um, the flat sleeve, you could really use any fabric and it would be beautiful, but I do recommend, not that you have to use it, but I do love the flat sleeve out of a voile or something a little bit drapier. Um, Honestly, it would even be gorgeous out of like a flannel or something like that. Just something that has not something too stiff because it is a big sleeve and you don't want it to overwhelm. So something softer and drapey is going to make it just fall nice and draped down rather than like stick out like wings. So that's something to consider when you're cutting your fabrics out. Um, so that's the one I'm going to use. Got my pattern pieces. I'm putting them together. So with the poppy back, You'll notice that there's two different cut lines. So this is the back piece and it says cut two on the fold for the no placket version, cut here for the placket version. So you might be wondering, wait, what do I need? Do I need a placket? Do I not need a placket? Um, so you can really make it either way. Poppy doesn't necessarily need the placket put in it to get it on and off. Um, Pop Poppy has that nice square neckline. It has it for the back and the front. It doesn't come down too low, but it does come down low enough that it's pretty easy to take on and take off. So the placket is not necessarily necessary <laughs> in order to put the garment on and off. However, if you want it to just last longer, extend the lifetime of it, if you're making the dress version, well, in a year and a half, that could possibly just be the tunic version on your child. And at this point in time, you might want that extra wiggle room of getting it on and off. So you might prefer to cut the placket version just to extend the wear, extend the lifetime of your, of your dress that you're making or your tunic. Um, another reason you would maybe want it is maybe you're making um, the baby version and you're worried about just ease of dressing because the littler ones sometimes can be harder to get things on and off of. So that would be... Um, your decision for today is are you going to do a placket or not if you are we're going to go over it tomorrow we'll put one in um if you're not we'll still be working on our stuff for tomorrow so everybody get your pattern pieces cut out pick out your beautiful fabrics 
and please post them in the group so I can get excited over seeing what we've got going on. And we will be back tomorrow to get started sewing. All right, so everybody have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow. Hey everybody, welcome to day two of the Poppy Sew Along. It's Erica here. Jessica is here with me, but she is behind the camera today. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so today on the Poppy Sew Along, we are completing steps one through 19. We were getting started on our dress front and backs and cutting our bodices out and doing our armhole templates. So the step I wanna show you today is step 18 and it's the armhole template. So the supplies that you're going to need to work on your armhole template, um, if you have a mat, it doesn't necessarily have to be this big, but if you do have a cutting mat, that can be really helpful because you have the grid lines on it that you can follow. It'll help you ensure you have a straight line. If you don't, you don't have to have one. You can use a ruler, lay it on the ground, wherever you normally cut. Okay, so you'll wanna have your cutting mat if you have it. I've already completed up to step 18, so this is actually my back. I am not doing the placket because um, it was easier, so I decided to skip it. <laughs> so no placket for me, so my front and back look exactly the same. So I've got the back, it's already attached to the skirt. I've left these edges ungathered, just like the tutorial says. I have my template, I have my chalk, and I have my ruler. Okay, so what you're gonna do is lay your either front or back out nice and flat. So just the important thing is that these extensions of the skirt, just that they're running straight so that you know you're cutting a straight line and a straight armhole, that's why the mat can be nice. So I have this laid out nice and straight. Take your template, and you're gonna place it right on top, lining up your raw edges. Slide my template on lined up at the center seam, signed up at the shoulder. And what I'm gonna do is hold it here. I'm gonna take my chalk and I'm just gonna trace my line. And I'm gonna trace this part of it too. Okay, so now you can move that away and then flip it over and you're gonna do the opposite side. Exact same thing. So it's lined up, trace. Make sure your skirt's straight. Yeah, oh, Jessica got me. Make sure your <laughs> skirt's straight. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so my skirt's straight. Now I'm gonna trace. It's really hard to see. Trace, okay. Trace your little edge. All right, so now, so you can see I've got my armholes traced in. So now I'm gonna use my ruler. This is the armhole, it goes down about half an inch, so this is where it's gonna get caught in the seam allowance. So from this, the edge of my chalk mark, I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna angle it all the way to the bottom edge of the skirt. Mm -hmm. Right here, chalk, angle to the bottom edge. And I'm gonna take this chalk and follow my ruler. Okay, I'm gonna do it on the opposite side. That chalk line's kind of crazy, but it'll work. All right, so now you can see the outline. So now you take your scissors and just cut along your chalk lines. the good one. Okay, and so that's it. Now, you can see it looks just like a, a normal bodice. You've got a full armhole, except you have this cute little yoke. So that is how you're gonna do the armholes. You're gonna repeat this method using, this was my back, so I'm gonna repeat it using the front. And then I believe the last thing we do today is that attach these together at the shoulders. I don't know if we do that. No. <laughs>
we don't even do that. We do that tomorrow. So once you have the armholes traced and cut out, set it aside and we'll sew again tomorrow. Bye. Hey everyone, welcome to day three of the Poppy Sew Along. Today, everyone should be completing steps 20 through 37. We're gonna be finishing up our bodices and closing the side seams. So it's Erica here, this is my poppy. Um, I just got back from the gym, so I'm not gonna be flipping the camera around today because it's not looking good on this side of the camera. <laughs> so I'm gonna stick with poppy. But I've got my poppy laid out in front of me. This is the bodice I was working on yesterday. Got it attached at the side seams. Got my pins ready to go. And I have my lining pieces. So this is my bodice lining. Um, as you can see, since I don't have the placket, mine's one piece. Um, in the next step, what they have, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be ironing these ends up half an inch. And the reason we're ironing them up is because we've lost half an inch in this seam allowance. So once we've sewn this lining onto this bodice and we flip it, we're gonna want those seams to actually match up. So we wanna take care when we iron up our half an inch on each side um, that we're being accurate with our measurements. I know for myself anyway, sometimes I'm kind of a wild ironer and I'll just kind of guess, but when I'm doing something like this, I like to be a little bit more accurate. So I don't know if you guys have seen um, one of these tools before, but this is by Clover and it's the perfect press and it's pretty cool, it's called the Hot Hemmer. Um, I have one that's open, but I wanted to show you it in the package in case you wanted to check one out. But it's really cool because you can actually layer your fabric right on top of the ruler and it has marked on it half inch, one inch, and then you can fold the fabric up and you can steam it and it doesn't affect the ruler like a plastic ruler, you know, would melt. But it's really awesome when you need an accurate measurement. So if you don't have one of these, um, you should get one. I know they're on Amazon. I'm not sure if they have them at Joanne's, but I really like it. It's cool. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this onto my bodice, and then I'll be right back. Okay, girls, so I've got my lining pinned onto my bodice. And again, I didn't use the placket, so mine's an exact square. If you use the placket, then yours would have a split, and you would be sewing up and then around, but I'm just gonna be sewing around. Um, it's important when you're sewing around a square bodice that you sew half an inch on your seam allowance and then cut over and sew half an inch so you have a nice square. Um, if you accidentally miss and you're, you, I'm sorry, if, you, if you're not using half an inch and you stop short and then you go over, you're gonna end up having your square that's off center and so your corners aren't gonna line up as nicely. So be careful when you sew this and use exactly half an inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna go sew mine and then I'll come back and I'll show you um, how to trim it and how to snip into the corners. Right back. All right, ladies, I have got my lining sewn on and as you can see, I've trimmed it all the way around. So I love to trim with pinking shears, especially around necklines, armholes, anything like that because I feel like it makes it turn a little smoother but we are sewing a rectangle, right? So we've got all these corners. If you were to try to turn this now, even though I've trimmed with pinking shears, if I were to try to turn this and iron it, it's not gonna work. I'm gonna have this pinch in my fabric. See how the fabric doesn't wanna turn? And that's because this fabric is blocking this corner from being able to turn. So this is where we say snip into the corners. If you see on this one, I've actually taken my scissors, even though I trim with pinking shears, and I snipped really close to my thread line. I mean, you could even go the tiniest bit closer, but it's but don't cut through your thread because there's nothing more depressing than that. But what you need to do is in all four of those corners, you need to snip the corner out. You don't need, you don't have to take a chunk out or anything. You just have to cut into it and get close to your thread without going through it. And now what you've done is you've allowed this fabric to be able to turn back this way and turn down this way. And that corner is able to lay down nicely when on this side it was bubbling up. So make sure you trim your edges 
and you snip into your corners before you flip it. And then ironing is always important in sewing, but especially when you're sewing with um, shapes like this, anytime you're doing scallops or you're doing necklines, um, if you're doing anything that's rectangled or squared, using steam and steaming it in is really going to give you a great finished product. It's going to take it from looking homemade to store-bought. So make sure you've got water in your iron, flip these linings, and give them a good steam. And I can't wait to see everybody's day three in the album, and I will talk to you girls tomorrow. Hey everybody, welcome to day four of the Sew Along. And before we start, I have to apologize because I messed up the steps. I'm so sorry. I guess I had an older version of the poppy downloaded and I thought the sleeves came before the hem, but I was wrong. You guys posted and said, no, no, the hem comes first. And so I downloaded the one, my most current one and the baby one. And I realized you're right. So I'm so sorry. Um, I changed up and I went ahead and did my hem today too, so we can follow the tutorial. But if you're sewing and you're participating in the sew along and you did your sleeves today, that's okay. No big deal. Just post it in the same album and then tomorrow post your hem in the other album. Um, it's fine if they're flip flopped because that was totally my fault. So sleeves today or hem or hem ruffle today, either way is no big deal. Whichever one you ended up doing is great. So I went ahead and did the hem ruffle on mine. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you my ruffle and show you just um, one small thing that can make life a lot better when you're ruffling a ruffle this big. All right, girls, so this is my poppy I've been working on. It's a little hard to tell what's going on because I've got it laid out, but this is my bottom hem and I've hemmed it up so it's good to go. And now I've got my ruffle that I'm adding on. So I don't know who all is doing the ruffle, but if you are doing the ruffle, you're probably like me and your fingertips are a little bit sore right now from pulling all of this all the way around this ruffle because it's a really big ruffle. Um, ruffles are always just time consuming. Sometimes I'll skip them and do like flat panels or something different if I'm in a hurry. But when I do take the time to do the ruffle, it's so beautiful and I never regret it once it's done. I just have to, you know, mentally be there. <laughs> but today I did the ruffle and I'm already in love with it. So what I wanted to tell you that can help make your ruffle easier. I know there's tons of ruffling tips. Some people use their serger to ruffle. Some people have a ruffling foot that they really like. Some people do their gathering threads with dental floss. Um, there's a million different ways, but I'm gonna show you what I do. It's pretty standard to what we say in our tutorial, um, but I just wanna show it to you on my sample. So this is my ruffle itself. I've already got it partially pinned on, but I like to gather a ruffle, anything with this size. I use two, two gathering rows for sure. So my top one is one eighth inch down and my second row down is a little over three eighths an inch down. Um, I like that spacing because when I sew this on, I'm gonna sew right in between these ruffle rows. I'm gonna sew right in between my gathering rows, I'm sorry. Um, that'll be my permanent stitch. And then since this is on the outside of the fabric, I'm definitely gonna take my gathering stitches out at the end. Because if not, I'm gonna have three rows of thread along here, and I just, I don't really want that because there's no point in them being there. Um, I'll admit sometimes when I'm doing a bodice and the ruffling is on the inside seam, uh, the gathering stitches, if it's not visible, I'll sometimes just leave it in there. I won't pop it out. But um, when it's visible, I definitely would pop it out. So I've got my two rows. I've started pinning here at my side seam. So what you're gonna wanna do to make this as painless as possible is once you have your ruffle created and you've sewn your gathering stitches in but you have not pulled it at all yet, go ahead and mark it in quarters. So you're gonna mark your side seams with pins, or you'll probably have side seams, but this has multiple seams. So maybe mark your side seams with pins and then mark the front center and the back center with pins. So you're gonna pin it in those four spots. So your flat ruffle is gonna have these four pins in it. Then as you pull and as you ruffle, you're gonna leave your pins in. 
So you have to just be a little careful, keep the heads down so you don't accidentally pull them out if you're um, pulling your gather threads, but keep them in and the ruffles go right past them. And then now what you're doing is you're creating sections. So what you can do on your actual garment is it mark the exact same places. You have your side seam already and then mark your front center and your back center of your skirts, the bottom edge. Then you can hold this up to your mat and figure out exactly how wide it is. So I figured out mine was like 21 and a half inches. So I knew when I was gathering my ruffle that each of my quartered sections were gonna have to be about 21 and a half inches. So then when you go to lay it on top of it, you can lay it on, it's now already started pinning and your pins are gonna essentially match up. So you have it pinned and now you know this section is totally equivalent to how much skirt you have. What this is gonna do is it's gonna give you an even ruffle all the way around. Um, if you don't do this, you don't have to, but it might be more ruffled in the front or in the back. Um, the front right side might be slightly more gathered than the front left side, just because it's hard to visually tell exactly how to make your ruffle equivalent. But if you just put the pin markers in, it just makes for easy matching up. Uh, it's less intimidating to me because I'm just doing a section at a time with this massive ruffle. So that's what I recommend. And then the way we're pinning this on is we're pinning it directly over the hem that we've made. So you're gonna take this and you're gonna overlap it to where there's about half an inch overlapped. And then you're gonna pin it right through there. And you're gonna keep pinning all the way around until you have the whole thing pinned on. And then like I said, I'm gonna sew right in between these two thread lines, all the way around, making sure that nothing's gathering or getting caught underneath, there's no pinches in my fabric. And then I'll pop these threads out and my ruffle hem will be done. And then tomorrow, we can do the sleeves that I'm apparently so excited about, I wanted to move them up a day. <laughs> I'll see you ladies tomorrow. Don't forget to put your pictures in the album. Hey everybody, we made it to day five, yay, we did it. It's officially day five of the Sew Along, and unless you're behind, which that's okay if you are, you have a catch up day. Um, today's the day that you're gonna finish. So I've been working on my sleeves, and there's a few different poppy sleeves. There is the flat sleeve, which is really cute, kind of the big boho sleeve, and then there is the um, little puff gathered sleeve, and then when we did the update, uh, we also added in a ruffle sleeve, which is really cute. So I did the puff sleeve because I think that my sister-in-law would really like it since I'm making this dress for my niece. And I think it really um, balances the ruffle on the bottom, just giving it that little baby doll look. So I've been working on my sleeve and I wanna show you um, after the ruffle is attached to the sleeve, how to attach it to the sleeve. Um, so I'm gonna flip around and we'll look at my sleeve. Okay guys, so this is my sleeve, and here's my main sleeve, and here is my sleeve cuff, and I've got my ruffle attached. So, what I've already done, as you can see, is this is my two sleeve cuff pieces. So, I actually gathered my ruffle, I sandwiched them right in between those two pieces. There's my seam, and you sew it in, and then, you take both this main and this lining and you flip them right back up. So what you end up having is your ruffle sandwiched in between your two cuff pieces, okay? So we don't really specify a main and a lining at the beginning with the cuff pieces. We just say to cut four. But once you've got your ruffle attached, you now do have a wrong side or a right side and you have a wrong side because you've got your hem and the wrong side of your fabric over here. So, once you've established you know, your right side and your wrong side, the next step we're gonna be doing is actually ironing up one of these cuffs, one of these sleeve cuffs. So, what you're gonna do is the one you wanna iron is the one that is actually now kind of considered your lining or the wrong side. So, the one that's on the wrong side of the ruffle. So, you're gonna take that sleeve cuff and you're gonna take this finished edge and iron it down half an inch. So what that's done now is on this side, you've created a finished edge. 
So now on this side, it's actually extending past that end. So now what you're gonna do is actually pin it onto your sleeve. So this is my puff sleeve. There's gathering along the bottom, see my gather lines, and then there's also a row of gathering along the top. You put both of those in, but you don't pull your top gather yet. So I went ahead and I gathered up my bottom gather. And then the way that this pins on is you're gonna open this one back up and this actually lays down on top of this. And you're gonna pin it from one end down to the other. You're gonna have to gather a little bit more. So this is gonna stay flipped up, this now lining piece that's folded down, and you're only pinning the sleeve to this right side cuff piece. So the edges are lining up. Your ruffle's kinda of just hanging out back here. And we're gonna pin all the way along this. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin mine. Okay, so I've got my cuff now pinned on to the bottom edge of my sleeve. So here's, looking at it from this view, you can see my gathers are all to the center, straight along these edges, and my ruffle lines up at the ends. So I flip it over. Here's the ruffle cuff pinned on. So here's that wrong side with that flipped up, and the right side of the other cuff piece is pinned to the bottom edge and my ruffle's actually here, okay? So I'm gonna bring it over to my machine and sew it on and then show you how it flips. All right, ladies, so I've actually sewn mine on. So this ruffle is now sewn on. I went ahead and did a little pre-ironing so it'll flip for me. But what you're gonna do now is you're gonna take this whole cuff and you're gonna fold it down. And this seam allowance that you have right here that you just created, you're gonna iron that down towards the cuff, not the sleeve. So that seam allowance is going down towards the cuff. So now you have this nice edge. And then when you flip it over, this other part that you've already folded down, the other cuff that we're now calling a lining cuff is gonna fold right up. So what that's doing is it's folding right over that seam allowance that you just made. So now, once you've got this sewn on, you can pin if you want, you're gonna sew right along the top edge of the cuff I like to sew on the front side so that it looks, I can make sure it's super straight on the front. So I'm gonna sew right along here. And that's gonna catch my little lining cuff on the other side. And then I'm also gonna sew right along here just to give it that second stitch line. And also that's gonna do a little top stitching to hold my ruffle in. Okay, and you see your finished product is super cute. Now you've got this adorable little puff sleeve with your ruffle and this cute cuff that runs along it. So here is my sleeve, and let me see yours. Load them into the album, and um, the next album I set up is gonna be the finished products. I cannot wait to see everybody's poppy dresses. So thank you so much for sewing with me, and I'll talk to you soon.